Hello well, YouTube, it's Shadow King King Nadru, and I'm here to do my review of Godzilla King of the Monsters. So I went to go see it yesterday, got my ticket right here, and so let's go talk about it. So loosely based off uh, Ghidra the Three-Headed Monster, uh, the story about Godzilla King of the Monsters is that a terrorist group uh, wants to release King Ghidorah, um, Due to them believing that uh, humanity is polluting and corrupting the world, and they'll destroy hu destroy humanity uh, in in the X and uh, number of years, and they feel that they need to revive the kaiju's, or as they're known in the monsterverse as the titans, to balance things out. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this doesn't go those plan because. Uh, King of Doors is just wreaking havoc, and it's up to Godzilla to stop him. But he gets a little bit of help from Monarch and the Mothra. And we also get a bit of Rodan, who at first was going to do his own thing, but then submits to Ghidorah, uh, but then falls back in line with Godzilla at the end of the film. So yeah, it's, it's similar, but not completely the same as Gija 3 Headed Monster. Now, honestly, I really did love this film. Uh, there was a lot of good callbacks to the original Godzilla films. Uh, a lot of the Showa, Heisei stuff. Uh, you got to see um, the four classic monsters, Godzilla, King Ghidorah, Rodan, and Mothra. They, not just these dumb animals, they got personality, and you kind of feel like these were sentient creatures. Uh, especially King Ghidorah, as you could still tell, like, uh, Michael Doherty, the director and writer, said that Ghidorah had some personalities. Uh, you could see that between the three heads, they acted differently. One head uh, stared curiously at humans, another one wanted to taste their blood, and the other one just wanted to keep them in line. And... You got to see more mythologies about them. So I like that these they inspired myths. Kind of reminds me of like Transformers Prime with the uh, Predacons inspiring some of the myths. I really didn't like that. Uh, and you also got to see Godzilla had some ties with Atlantis. So that kind of makes sense. And they helped fill the culture. I also did, uh, did like Mothra. I mean, I wasn't expecting much from her, uh, but she really did shine. You really get to see that she's this gentle creature unless provoked and will go out of the way to protect humanity. Uh, they also establishes a bit of a symbiotic relationship between uh, her and Godzilla. So I guess maybe like when Godzilla's not around, she protects the Earth, which is probably a good concept if they ever want to do a Mothra solo film. Uh, like you would say, Godzilla is hibernating or is too far away from a certain threat to get there in time. So Mothra has to deal with the situation. I think they should probably just go with the hibernation route because uh, they introduced a hollow earth theory. So that's kind of going to be contrived to Godzilla couldn't make it in time. Um, I also did like that they uh, acknowledged that Ghidorah is from outer space. He's officially confirmed to be an alien. He, I mean, I mean, because that open, I mean, that finally acknowledges that the monsterverse is expanding their horizon, kind of like how Marvel did. At first, it was granted, but now they're and going to the cosmic stuff. Uh, so this opens opportunities for other monsters to show up, like uh, Gigan, maybe Space Godzilla. Though they'll have to maybe change a few things so it could be a little bit more realistic. Uh, but it, those kind of things can work. Uh, the humans, uh, they were a lot better than they were in the original 2014 movie. I thought the humans in 2014 were, were kind of bland, except for Brian Cranston. Everybody was pretty good. Uh, the girl, Maddie Russell, uh, was dealing with her parents being strained, and now she's being drawn along to uh, her mother's ego terrorist plan. Uh, the mother wanted to do the right thing by trying to uh, have, have nature balance itself out using the titans. 
even though she's misguided and it kind of drives a wedge between her family uh when she tries to atone for it in the end uh mark russell the guy who's dealing with the loss of his son during the 2014 event and has a grudge against godzilla but realized that it wasn't his fault and that he's a necessary part in keeping the balance of nature and the earth I also did like <coughs> I also did like some of the uh, monarch characters uh, they they were a bit funny and had a lot of personality to work off each other um, there were some characters I thought was going to piss me off because they sounded really stupid and annoying uh, in the trailers, but they actually worked out when the when the actual movie had added more context. So, aside from some dumb lines, it they worked out fine. Uh, the effects were. <coughs> I'm, I'm sorry, the effects were pretty good. Um, some of the best I've ever seen. I also did like how they tried to get some explanation about some of the. Uh, some of the monsters' powers, saying that Godzilla's uh, atomic breath works on a circulation of in his body full of radiation, and but Mothra has bioluminescence, which allows her to project this blinding light uh, that can di dissipate storms, which is useful to, against Ghidorah. Uh, and Ghidorah has bioelectric uh, powers, which allows him to create storms. Uh, very interesting. Uh, we also got to see new powers like Godzilla being able to create whirlpools when he was super powered up by the atomic bomb. Uh, spoiler alert, uh, this bomb was used by Ken Watanabe's character, Dr. Sarazawa, uh, who sacrificed himself to recharge Godzilla so he could fight King Ghidorah a third time. Uh, after he was hit by the oxygen destroyed by the military. Once again, the military ruins everything. <coughs> uh, which was a nice bit because the original Dr. Sarazawa from the 1954 Godzilla movie used the oxygen stored to kill Godzilla, and now this one is saving Godzilla with radiation. So that's a bit poetic, and I know that was directed to Tim because he said it. It was a nice touch. I also did like the world building as you add a whole lot of other monsters with their inspiring myths like uh, Baphomet, um, what was another one, Masilon, or I forget, uh, there, was, there was like 17 other monsters in this film uh, reported, uh, but we didn't get to see all of them, but we got to see some that looked like uh, well, a giant mammoth, uh, one that looked like the one the Mutos. Which is odd that it bowed to Godzilla, considering the Mutos were parasites to Godzilla. And another spider monster. So I guess there's not much reason to bring Kamanga into the MonsterVerse, since, you know, it's basically just a giant spider. Um, but overall, I did say this was a pretty much a good improvement of this film. Now, a lot of critics are bashing on this movie, especially Ron Tomato. Mainly because it, uh, they felt the human part was, I mean, the human part was too weak and wasn't focused on, despite the fact that in Godzilla 2014 the complaint was that there was too much focus on the humans and not on the monsters. So critics proved to be stupid and worthless. Oh, all in all, I say go check out this movie. Um, watch it the biggest screen that you can. It'll be a great experience. It will not be a disappointment. So those were all my thoughts on Godzilla, King of the Monsters. And I will catch you guys with another video later.